it symbolized us kind of smashing and destroying the idea of what New Year's Day was and what we were and rebirthing into something more powerful, even if you don't like it, even if it scares you, even if it's too much, we're coming into our own now and there's really no turning back from that. Hey guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sound. Now New Year's Day are back with a brand new single and music video. I'm delighted to say we've got Ash on the line to tell us all about it. How are you, Ash? I'm doing so good. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. Nice to see you. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's good to be able to catch up. Uh, and especially at a time like this where it's been a minute since you had some new music out. And here we are. This is really, really exciting. Um, Let's start right there, shall we? Tell me a little bit about where this new single kind of came from. When did uh, it kind of start coming to be? Okay. So you know how every band made like a, a COVID album where they went into the studio and wrote and, and really like took the time to work. I didn't do that. I <laughs> opposite of that. I did nothing. Actually, that's not true. I did. I did nothing for a while. Like we all did, you know, uh, music related. I just, I had been touring since I was 16 or 17 years old. And especially the past 10 years was nonstop touring. In fact, I think, the last year before COVID, we had toured eight months out of that year. And for years and years and years on end, and I was just tired. I, I didn't want to rush into anything. I, I felt like completely drained and spent. And I was actually, I'm gonna be honest, I was grateful. Like I was grateful for everything to get canceled. All of our tours got canceled and I was like, oh my God, yes. That's what I needed to have happen. And uh, I just didn't know it. And uh, so I got married did that congratulations by the way let's get that in there quick congratulations thank you and uh spent some much needed time with my dogs and my family which i'd never it had been years and years since i'd done i hadn't been home for a birthday thanksgiving in like years so just did that and let music organically happen to me if it wanted to happen so um I started kind of dabbling with getting back into the studio in maybe like late 2021. And uh, it happened pretty quick, actually. Like all, everything I wanted to say just started flowing out. And all of a sudden our label and our manager was like, you have the song, like who cares if the album's not done? Let's roll with it. Like, let's not wait a second longer. And their excitement got me excited. And even though I didn't necessarily feel quite ready, I was like, you know what? Heck it, let's. Let's jump in with both feet. Let's, I'm ready. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's so funny he say that because it's like so many artists I've talked to, you know, obviously, you know, the world kind of fell apart a bit, but having that space away from things to just kind of clear your head and not have so much kind of busy stuff, you know, what it's like, you know, especially in this industry when there's just a million other things that go around the making of an album, not just the making of it. It's good to be able to slow down for a second. And I guess, guess just figure out what the next move is and what you want the band to sound like next, I suppose. I spent, I spent probably at least six months just gathering ideas for our first single and for what the, the band would look like and what we wanted to say and what we wanted to stand for and, and who wanted to be involved and who I wanted to be involved with me. And we put a lot of thought into it, like a lot of thought to the point where I had to tell myself, like, stop, you're done researching. You, you did it. You can't research anymore. It's just time to pull the trigger and move forward. Nice. And like you say, it sounds like everyone involved kind of thought, yep, this is the one. This is the song. This is the one to kind of come back with. Tell me a little bit about, I guess, why that is. And, and does it feel like, does it feel like it sounds in the same kind of arena of what we might hear in the future? Or is this, you know, tell me about why this one was calling to you so much. Okay. So I think in the past, I, not I think, I know, I wasn't being fully me. I was kind of holding back. I was scared still. And I know I, I, I admit this. I'm a confident person on stage and I'm confident in my craft and I am, but there was still a little part of me that was like, what if people don't like it if I do this fully how I want to, or what if the industry doesn't like it? What if fans don't like it? What if I get made fun of? Like, what if I come off cringy? You know, like I just had all these things that kind of held me back. Like the last 10% of really letting go. And I reached a point during the pandemic where can I curse on the show? Yeah, of course you can. Okay, where I was just like, fuck it. Like, I don't care. I don't care if I'm cringy. I don't care if everyone hates it. I don't care if it's the worst thing. I just want to do it the way I see it in my mind and just go for it. So, that, so that's 
really what pushed everything forward for me. I finally felt ready to just say, fuck it, fuck it, and fuck it all. And it, it worked. It worked. And I finally got out of my head. Yeah, that's always the best way, isn't it? To just kind of have that instinct and run with it because no one's going to know more what should be right for your career than yourself at the end of the day. You've got to kind of take that opportunity and run with it. And we can see as well with the music video as well for Hurts Like Hell. You know, it's a big, strong aesthetic. And it's always nice to see what you guys do when you hit a new era, how you want to approach it, what kind of style you want to go with. Talk me through this. Is this how it's uh, going to be developing from now on? This is the new era? Yes. Uh, I always held, I always had this idea of like the boys doing the half red, half black and the ski mask. And they're like, again, there was always that voice like, what if people tease you and accuse you of like wanting to hide the band or wanting to make the band like you, or you have to be the star or you're a diva. And I was like, what if they think that? And I got to a point where again, I was just like, yeah, I don't care. I don't care what they think. I want to do what I've always wanted to do. And I have a group of guys with me that are so crazy supportive. It's insane. I've never felt this level of support inside New Year's Day. We have um, part of our original lineup back. We have the Wolf Brothers are back. Nikki, of course, has been there for like 13, 12, 13 years now. And our newest member, Tommy, who is, I'm pretty sure, an angel put on this earth. He's like the sweetest guy. <laughs> all he cares about is puppies and pancakes. Very sweet guy. And we all get along. And I finally felt like supported to do what I really wanted to do. So Hurts Like Hell, I knew for our first song in almost three years, I had to come out like dick swinging, as I like to call it. And... <laughs> And um, I had this idea. And of course, the first thing everyone said was that's too expensive. So scale it down. And, uh, and my, my, what I always say is, um, I don't care. Let's figure it out. And I, I had the support of the label and the team and they loved the idea and the, and what it meant to me. You know, I had sent this huge long video treatment. They said it was like the longest video treatment they'd ever gotten. And I really explained it in detail why why every part of that video was important to me and why it had to be in the video and what it symbolized for me. And it symbolized us kind of smashing and destroying the idea of what New Year's Day was and what we were and rebirthing into something more powerful, even if you don't like it, even if it scares you, even if it's too much, we're coming into our own now and there's really no turning back from that. Yeah, it's good to see you guys amped up and kind of ready for what's coming next, particularly when it's been so long off, you know, it's nice to see you guys really hitting the ground running like this. And of course, you know, begs the question about more new music. I know you won't want to tell me too much just yet, but you know, I have to ask you. So how much kind of stuff is out there? And I guess also who you've been working with, you know, you've just said it's a really exciting lineup for the band this time around, but I know you're always very collaborative, like to work with co-writers, all that kind of thing as well. What can you tell us about all that? Okay, so um, the record is about halfway done right now, and we're not rushing it. We've just been kind of posting through. Um, I've probably written about 30 songs, maybe seven have made the cut. So I'm being very picky. I'm being very, very, very picky on what I want to put out there this time around, where before it was like, hurry up, make a record in between tours, put out what you can. Not this time. I'm really taking my time. And I'm in love with all the music. I can't wait for We've already chosen the next single and I cannot wait. I think it's even better than this one was like an introduction into what we're doing. The next one is like, we're here. We're not going anywhere. This is the sound. And as far as writers go, um, Jeremy Valentine, who is now back in the band, uh, has been a writer this whole time. He never really left the band completely. He just wasn't touring. So he helped write our Diary of a Creep EP and our Unbreakable album. So we're continuing to write with Jeremy and the same two producers I used on Unbreakable, which is Mitch Marlowe, who's responsible for bands like In This Moment and Scott Stevens, who is like King Midas. Scott Stevens is a co-write and producer for Dorothy, Diamante, In This Moment, Shinedown, Hailstorm, um, Lilith Czar, you, you name it, you name it especially a woman in rock, he's helped her create the vision. So continuing on working with him. Yeah, that's really exciting. I'm glad there's a lot of people from Unbreakable there as well, because, you know, obviously we talked a lot around that album. And again, that confidence was there and it seemed to go down really, really well with your audience. And also you were kind of keen to experiment. There was little different styles and like I say, a lot of different co-writers in there, which is nice. So I wonder now that it's been a few years, it's been about three years or so since new music, right? It's always nice to kind of check in and think like what did you actually learn from making that previous record from making unbreakable that you want to carry forward particularly when you're working with a lot of the same people were you able to kind of pinpoint the moments where you wanted to take those and push those further yeah totally i feel like unbreakable was the first time i really 
was daring. Uh, songs like Unbreakable, where I said I want to make a guitar riff that's not unlistenable. I don't I like I want it to be so ugly and terrible sounding that it's like just enough where you can kind of fathom it. And so I felt like we really experimented a lot with that sound. And then I feel like was shut up where we had experimented with more of um, a more pop sound, not pop rock, but a, a pop element and then giving it a rock twist. So there's going to be a lot more of that on this record. So we're going way heavy and way pop all at the same time. It's definitely, it's, it's hard to walk the fine line. It's, but when you nail it, it's very rewarding. I think. Yeah, very, very exciting. And of course, going to be something that's going to be built for the live stage, which, you know, I'm, I'm, you know I'll let you go shortly, but we've got to talk about these live plans because Hailstorm for a start. I mean, I mean, what a wonderful, wonderful band. Love always chatting to Lizzie and stuff. Great live performers and feels like it will be a really, really nice fit for your crowd and their crowd as well. Feels like a pretty good, well put together tour right there. Not a bad first tour back. <laughs> we'll say that. But they're our family, you know, Hailstorm. And, and us started touring together in 2017 and pretty much toured nonstop together up until the pandemic. We love them. They've seen me through breakups. They've seen me through wins. They've seen me through the scary, the scary stuff, you know, all of us being on tour um, through a lot of crazy times. And I'm just happy to be back with family. You know, I, I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. I'm so excited to see them live again. I'm gonna sit there and soak in every second of it. I'm gonna watch it every night. And not that I ever took it for granted before, but I'm never taking it for granted after what we've been through. Yeah, no, you must be like so many other artists. Everyone's just been saying exactly the same thing over the last year. Like, oh my God, I need to get back on a stage. It's just, yeah, it's there's something about that energy. And you must have noticed it as well, just from going to shows, I'm sure, recently. Like, the crowds do appreciate it just as much as the artists do now. Everyone is just delighted. There's kind of a different energy now. It's back, right? Luckily, we did get to play one show during COVID. We, we played Incarceration and uh the energy was crazy i know there's like everyone's gonna say that but i couldn't i I told myself i was like i'm not gonna get emotional i'm not gonna be that person we're gonna go up on stage and rock and i got on the stage and i started crying i I couldn't hold it in it was too it was so much warmth and welcoming and positivity and excitement and support and it was just so overwhelming that i like i choked up it was it felt so good it felt so 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 good yeah it's so good to have live music back man and, and on that note i really hope we are going to be seeing you over here in the uk at some point soon again don't know what you can tell me but i'm hoping there's some plans somewhere in the diary right surely yeah we're definitely going to hit the ground running in 2023 right now we're trying to dial in our new slash old lineup get them acclimated again um and really we're really being detailed with our live show. We um, practice a lot. We have our own lockout now, which we've never had before. And we're just chipping away and working at it every night because we really want we really want to be the best New Year's Day we've ever, ever been. Really exciting to hear that, Ash. Well, no, congrats on this single. Congrats on more new music. Looking forward to hearing it. And like I say, looking forward to seeing you guys live over here in the UK when you do. All right, but take care of yourself till then. Yeah. So good to chat to you. All right, Ash, everybody.